Hello, child of God. This is E. Daniel Ponce. I want to invite you to the International Prayer Service every Wednesday night right here at your ministry, United with Christ. Now, listen, I want you to be a part of this night. Even if you're from other churches, you have a prayer ministry. You're the head of a prayer group. Come and join us. This is a night of prayer, a night when we come together. I take all the prayer requests that people have written me and my partners. We pray over you again and many more that have letters and that have written in. We're praying for you. We're laying hands on you and we're taking the prayer requests of your needs, your hurts, your wants, your desires, and we're presenting them to the Lord and our prayers are going up as an incense and aroma into the glory of his presence. You can have a miracle when two or three of us come together, we will experience the power of God. Join us every Wednesday, 7 o'clock in California, 9 o'clock in Texas, 10 o'clock in New York. We want you there in the prayer service. Hola, este es el hermano Daniel Ponce haciéndote una invitación muy especial. Cada miércoles hemos apartado en el Ministerio Unidos con Cristo un día y noche de pura oración donde estamos orando por las peticiones. Muchos compañeros en pacto me han escrito, otros me han enviado cartas, gloria al Señor. Y aquí tengo teléfonos que han llamado, uno que me llama y me pide oración por sanidad divina, otros que escriben y son parte del correo que me llega. Este no es unos cuantos. Queremos orar contigo cada miércoles a las 7 de la tarde en California, a las 9 de la noche en Texas, a las 10 de la tarde en Nueva York y Puerto Rico. No te lo pierdes. Llama, haga parte y usa el número que están en, el tel en su televisor o en su iPad, en la tecnología que hay hoy y mándanos su petición porque aquí hay oración que es contestada. Dios te bendiga. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Daniel, my friend. What a joy it is to be coming your way today. Remember, we do two shows every day. First one right now will be in Spanish. And in 17 minutes, I'll be right back to share with you in English. And we are in the subject today. We're walking down that path of Jesus the last week that he's here on the earth. And today, we're going to talk <clears throat> for a few moments about the 10 virgins. You don't want to miss it. Call a friend, tell a neighbor and be that missionary, be that person that you are the link of bringing somebody in contact with that great victory they need in their life. I'll be right back to share with you today here on the program. Bienvenidos todos aquí a su programa, Daniel, mi amigo. Es un placer llegar contigo. Estamos alabando y glorificando al Señor. Bienvenido, hermano Julio, Thank que you, me Mr. acompaña Gracias. el día de hoy. Y vamos a estar hablando. Esta es la semana, la última se más semana, um, symbolically, yeah. simbólicamente, that Jesus was here, que Jesús estaba en, en, la en su cuerpo humano de carne. Yeah, and so estamos tocando las temas sí. de lo que estaba pasando uh, en, 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 esa semana. En, en esa semana y las, los ejemplos que nos estaba dejando. Muchos. Una que vamos a hablar hoy es las diez vírgenes, mm -hmm. las di diez sabios. Eran sabias. Las, las sabias y las insensatas. Las sabias y las insensatas. Mm -hmm. Now, vamos a leer del libro de San Mateo, capítulo 25, versículo 1, gloria al Señor, hasta el versículo 13, 13 versículos. San Mateo, capítulo 25, versículo 1, hasta el versículo 13. 13. Un saludo, hijo, al Amen. pueblo de Dios con nosotros el día de hoy. Amen. Buenas tardes, amado pueblo. Una vez más, dándole gracias al Señor por la oportunidad que me consigue dando de estar con el obispo y con ustedes en su programa, Daniel, mi amigo. Esta semana que estamos uh, estudiando uh, tradicionalmente, oh, se, se conoce como la Semana Santa, pero un, los mensajes más impactantes y poderosos y llenos de luz y llenos de lecciones que Jesús nos dejó fue en la última semana de su vida en la tierra en su cuerpo terrenal por supuesto durante tres años enseñó la palabra del reino pero las lecciones que nos dejó en su última semana son tan gloriosas están ricas sí. de tesoros espirituales 
lecciones que ahora nos sirven a ti y a mí. Una vez que las miremos con luz, con revelación, podemos ver exactamente lo que el Señor nos estaba diciendo. Les dijo a sus discípulos, pero también a la iglesia que iba a nacer en ese glorioso día de Pentecostés. Esta lección de las vírgenes es una de las más importantes y oramos para que esta palabra entre a tu corazón el día de hoy. Well, let's just dive right in. Vamos a entrarle. En el libro de San Mateo, capítulo 25, <coughs> versículo 1. Dice, entonces el reino de los cielos será semejante a diez vírgenes okay. que tomando sus lámparas salieron a recibir al esposo. So las está usando como ejemplo. Es un ejemplo, es un ejemplo de la iglesia. Cinco de, y cinco. Cinco y cinco, de un espíritu que está vuelto a nacer, iluminado por el espíritu y la palabra. Ahorita vamos a ver eso. Versículo, Versículo dos. dos. Cinco de ellas eran prudentes Ahí o sabias está. y cinco eran insensatas, mm. sin sabiduría. Versículo tres. Las insensatas, las que no tenían sabiduría tomando sus lámparas, no tomaron consigo aceite. Wow. Mas las prudentes, las sabias, tomaron aceite en sus vasijas juntamente con sus lámparas. Eso es importante. Aceite y lámpara. Versículo 5. Y tardándose el esposo, tardándose el esposo, cabecearon todas y se durmieron. Versículo 6. Y a la medianoche se oyó un clamor. Aquí viene el esposo. Salid a recibirle. Mm. Entonces, todas aquellas vírgenes se levantaron y arreglaron sus lámparas y las insensatas dijeron a las prudentes, Oye. danos de tu aceite porque nuestras lámparas se apagan. Mas las prudentes respondieron diciendo, para que no nos falte a nosotras y a vosotras, vayan ustedes a los que venden y compren para ustedes mismas. Versículo 10, pero mientras ellas iban a comprar, vino el esposo. Y las que estaban preparadas entraron con él a las bodas y se cerró la puerta. Mm. Versículo 11, después vinieron también las otras vírgenes diciendo, Señor, Señor, ábrenos. Mas él respondiendo dijo, de cierto les digo que no las conozco. Wow. Y en el versículo 13, para terminar, aquí está lo que el esposo les dice. Velar. Velad pues, porque no sabes el día ni la hora en que el Hijo del Hombre ha de venir. Cinco personas sabias. Sabias. Cinco insensatas. Insensatas. Falta de sabiduría y sensatez. En el día de hoy tenemos el mismo ejemplo. Amén. En el libro de Proverbios, ahorita encuentro la escritura, dice que el espíritu del hombre es la lámpara de Jehová. Sí, yes, sí. Yes. Es la lámpara de Jehová. Entonces, basado en esa escritura, podemos ver lo que el Señor les estaba diciendo aquí a estas vírgenes. Fue una de las lecciones que Él dejó en su última semana en la tierra. Y simplemente les está diciendo que va a llegar el día a donde Él va a regresar. Va a regresar, número uno, la palabra virgen, pues es una, es una, es una mujer que es, a, está pura, se ha guardado, se ha cuidado, está preparada para entregarse a su Señor o al que ha sido declarado como su esposo. Esa es la iglesia de Jesucristo, los que hemos vuelto a nacer redimidos por fe en Jesús. Número dos, está hablando de la lámpara, de la, de la lámpara que es el espíritu del hombre vuelto a nacer. La nueva creación en Jesucristo, esa es la lámpara de Jehová y esa lámpara tiene que estar encendida en todo el tiempo, aunque está viva para con Dios, pero es el Espíritu Santo en nuestro espíritu y la palabra de Dios en nuestro espíritu que ilumina nuestro espíritu, ilumina los ojos de nuestro entendimiento para ver esa esperanza a la que Él nos ha llamado y sobre todo para estar esperando ese glorioso día que Él nos, va, nos ha prometido. Jesús regresará una vez más, pero Él regresa primero por su iglesia. De esto se trata esta parábola. Él regresa por la iglesia que Él redimió, la iglesia que Él llamó gloriosa, sin mancha y sin arruga. Esta parábola nos dice que en el cuerpo de Cristo, obispo, hay gente que está preparada, yeah. que está entregada, que caminan en su fe, 
que tienen una comunión viva con Dios, que están haciendo lo que Dios los mandó a hacer, están honrando la unción, son personas que pertenecen a un cuerpo local, a una iglesia local, y de ahí, como dijo el libro de Efesios, están siendo preparados para la obra del ministerio. Son personas que viven por fe y están en espera de la venida del Señor. Pero también habla de las otras cinco, también. Bueno, you know, me gustó esto en el versículo 3. Uh -huh. Las insensatas tomaron sus lámparas no tomaron consigo aceite. 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 Y muchas veces tomamos parte, pero no completo. Y hay que tomar todo completo. Si queremos que la cosa funcione, si queremos que haya resultado completo, hay que ser completo el trabajo del Señor. Yeah. No podemos orar y decir, oh, yo creo, lo recibo, que mi victoria está hecha. Luego se acaba el servicio y te sales y te subes al carro y luego empiezas, bueno, a ver qué va a se pasar. Se apagó la lámpara. A ver si vamos a tener, a ver cómo nos va a ir. Now, wait a minute. Acabas de hablar pura fe acá pura y luz. ahora estás empezando a hablar pura duda. En otra forma, acá prendiste la, lum, la lumbre, la lámpara. la lámpara, y acá la estás pagando. Wow. Manténgala prendida acá, manténgalo prendido acá. En la casa y en, en la calle. la área y en el ambiente donde no hay luz, manténgala prendida. <coughs> Frente, cara a cara con el problema, el asunto. Mi Dios me suplirá y nada yo faltaré. Hey, so, tiene el aceite, tiene la lámpara, pero manténgalas juntas. Ellos ganaron las lámparas, pero no ganaron el aceite. aceite. En otra forma, muchos venimos y ganamos la experiencia de la salvación, pero el aceite que representa la unción, no ganamos la unción, para darnos el poder That's para good. destruir esas cosas naturales que están en la vida para que tengamos una victoria completa. That's so good. En Proverbios 20, 27 dice, Lámpara de Jehová es el espíritu del hombre. Mm. Lámpara de Jehová es el espíritu del hombre, la cual escudriña lo más profundo del corazón. Esta parábola se está refiriendo a eso. Ahorita lo acaba de decir obispo. Tenemos, aunque somos vueltos a nacer y nuestro espíritu es ahora la lámpara de Jehová, ahí es a donde Él nos habla, right. nos enseña, nos guía, a donde nos ilumina. Pero para que esa lámpara se mantenga encendida en todo tiempo, tenemos que estar conectados con Dios por medio del Espíritu Santo y la Palabra. Aquí dice la escritura entonces que llegó un momento a donde las diez dormitaron, uh -huh. las que estaban preparadas right. y las que no estaban preparadas. Right. Hubo un cierto dormitar, pero en, en medio de eso, de que, de que estaban dormitando, se oyó la voz, aquí viene el esposo, prepárense para recibirles. Es, Now, you know what? Quiero interrumpirte, uh -huh. quiero decir esto, ¿cómo la ves? Que ellas que tenían el aceite, tenían la lámpara, y vinieron las que no tenían el aceite, le dijeron, darnos de tu aceite para que nos alcance también. Now, ¿Cómo la ves? Que ellos dijeron, no, no te vamos a dar. Vamos a dar. Yeah. Pues ya, ya había, ya, ya el día ya había llegado, y eso lo vemos hoy, obispo, esto lo hemos hablado en otros programas, a donde hay muchas personas todavía en la iglesia que dependen de la unción de otras personas. So, ellos no estaban tan malas, no. envidiosas, que yo no te voy a dar nada. No era eso. La cosa es que las diez estaban Aquí. en posición para recibir, pero cinco, pues, se la llevaron. No, pues, que a rato y a ver si tengo tiempo, quién sabe qué. Pero los otros tomaron más serio la cosa. Sí, está, es, estaban cosa trabajando es que su salvación. Los diez tenían la misma oportunidad yes, de sir. preparar. Todos la tenemos la, una medida de fe. No yeah. es que nadie, ah, es que ustedes tienen fe. Que sea. No, 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 no. Todos. La escritura dice: tenemos Cristo, la medida de fe. Tenemos la medida de fe. Todos cuando empezamos nos salvemos. Igual. Right. Todos tenemos una medida. Uh -huh. No tienes más que yo, yo no tengo más que tú. Lo que pasa es cómo operamos. Ponemos por obra la yes, fe. So, estas 
cinco tuvieron oportunidad, pero no aprovecharon, no la aprovecharon. de hacerlo completo. Exactamente. Es la medida de fe. La diferencia es que la, esa medida se trabaja, se hace That's más it. fuerte, se That's hace it. más efectiva y otros no. Mira lo que pasa entonces para terminar. Uh, se, las diez el, dormitaron, se oye el grito. Aquí viene el esposo, salida a recibirle, entonces todas aquellas vírgenes se levantaron, las diez se despertaron, se levantaron, arreglaron sus lámparas, empezaron a preparar para recibir al Señor, pero las insensatas o las que no tenían sabiduría se dieron cuenta que no tenían el suficiente aceite, no okay. tenían la suficiente unción, en ellas para ese arrebatamiento y le dijeron a las demás, a las otras cinco, danos de tu aceite porque nuestra lámpara se apaga. Dice el 9, más las prudentes respondieron diciendo, para que no nos falte a nosotras, yes. ni a ustedes vayan a los que venden y compren para ustedes Amen. mismas. Amen. Eso lo vemos hoy, estaba diciendo obispo, que hay muchas personas, y estas no son personas malas, no, es que, no, no, no estoy diciendo que no aman a Dios, que no son hijos de Dios, para nada. Simplemente son personas que no han aprendido a trabajar su propia salvación, a poner a trabajar los derechos que ellos tienen en Cristo Jesús, como la oración, como el, el, el recibir la sanidad, liberación, Amen. salvación. Entonces son personas que van a pedir todo el tiempo, dame de tu aceite, dame de tu aceite, ora por mí, dame esto. Eso no está no. mal. Pero va a llegar el día a donde tú tienes que trabajar tu propia salvación. Trabajar tu propia fe y del espíritu que está en ti salga toda esa necesidad, el suplir a esa necesidad que tienes. Now, ¿Sabes qué? Hay que prepararnos. La oportunidad está presente. <coughs> Mañana, miércoles, vamos a tener la gran oración internacional. Ahora está en ti. Que pongas tu petición y crean en el Señor. Now, alguien dice, pues mi petición es la misma. Entonces, cuando llamas, diga, estoy confiando, alabando al Señor, que yo tengo la victoria en tal cosa. To God. Porque ya le pediste, ya yeah. tu petición está conocida. Ahora vamos a ponerle poder atrás. Oración, día de mañana, el miércoles. Un día que me gozo tanto, porque ese es el día que yo digo, la petición se transforma a respuesta. En manifestación. Tú no lo quieres perder. Dios te bendiga. Gracias por haber estado con nosotros. Usa el correo electrónico para que puedas enviar tu petición y lo tengo aquí pronto, rápidamente. Glory to God. Y queremos tenerlo en nuestras manos. Que Dios te bendiga en día de hoy. Si sabes inglés, ay, quédate porque ahorita vamos a volver con el segmento en inglés, alabando, glorificando al Señor para siempre. Él vive, Él te ama. Acuérdate de Hebreos 13, 8. Jesucristo es el mismo ayer, hoy, por todos los siglos. Si lo hizo ya una vez, la puede ser otra vez. Desde mi corazón al suyo, te extiendo amor, cariño, ánimo, porque esto se te va a hacer. No te cansas de alabar a Dios. Alábale porque Él está contigo. Que Dios te bendiga. Gracias, reverendo, para estar Amén. con nosotros. Y gracias a usted. Que tengas un buen día, noche y tarde a la hora que me estás viendo. Porque ahora sí ya se está viendo siete días a la semana, 24 Amén. horas al día. Gloria a Dios por esta gran oportunidad. Que Dios esté contigo. Bye, bye por hoy. Dios te guarde. Hola, este es el hermano Daniel Ponce haciéndote una invitación muy especial. Cada miércoles hemos apartado en el Ministerio Unidos con Cristo un día y noche de pura oración donde estamos orando por las peticiones. Muchos compañeros en pacto me han escrito, otros me han enviado cartas, gloria al Señor. Y aquí tengo teléfonos que han llamado, uno que me llama y me pide oración por sanidad divina, otros que escriben y son parte del correo que me llega. Estos no son unos cuantos. Queremos 
orar contigo cada miércoles a las 7 de la tarde en California, a las 9 de la noche en Texas, a las 10 de la tarde en Nueva York y Puerto Rico. No te lo pierdes. Llama, haga parte y usa el número que están en, el tel en su televisor o en su iPad, en la tecnología que hay hoy y mándanos su petición porque aquí hay oración que es contestada. Dios te bendiga. Hello, child of God. This is he, Daniel Ponce. I want to invite you to the International Prayer Service every Wednesday night right here at your ministry, United with Christ. Now, listen, I want you to be a part of this night. Even if you're from other churches, you have a prayer ministry. You're the head of a prayer group. Come and join us. This is a night of prayer, a night when we come together. I take all the prayer requests that people have written me and my partners. We pray over you again and many more that have letters and that have written in. We're praying for you. We're laying hands on you and we're taking the prayer requests of your needs, your hurts, your wants, your desires, and we're presenting them to the Lord and our prayers are going up as an incense and aroma into the glory of his presence. You can have a miracle. When two or three of us come together, we will experience the power of God. Join us every Wednesday, 7 o'clock in California, 9 o'clock in Texas, 10 o'clock in New York. We want you there in the prayer service. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Daniel, my friend. What a joy it is to be coming your way, to magnify the word of God and to grow in his word. That's the whole purpose. Three things to inspire you, edify you, glory to God, and to motivate your faith. That's yes, what Lord. I want to see happen in your life. I want you to be inspired. I want you to be edified, grow up in the power of his might. Grow up to that believer that you put the devil in his place. You put the circumstances in their place Praise and God. say, oh no, this is the way it's going to be. This is what God promised. This is what God said. And then you take that motivated faith and say, I'm moving on. I'm going up higher. Thank you, Reverend Hoody, for being with us today yes, here Lord. on the program. And today we're in that last week of the life of Christ on the <clears> earth. <throat> we're taking segments of what he taught. Mm -hmm. And today Today we're Powerful. going to talk about the ten virgins, the foolish ones and, and the, the wise, wise ones. ones. Which one are you, the foolish or the wise? I hope you're the wise one. And then we're going to, I'm going to touch on something that I saw here that I've read this so many times. And I tell you, it really blessed my heart. And we're going to see <clears throat> what the Lord said. We're reading today from St. Matthew chapter 25, yes. verse 1 starting in verse 1 all the way through verse 13. Listen to what he says. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Purpose, meet the bridegroom. He's went coming forth. again. That's important. They went forth. It's yeah, all on the action way. word here. Everything's action. It's a verb. Amen. you got to get ready to move from where you are to a place of meeting. And I'm telling you, son, there's going to be a meeting in the air, the song says, and we're going to meet the Lord. Glory to now God. he goes on to say here in verse 2, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Verse 3, That they were foolish, now watch this, They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. That's it. Now that's, that's silly. Yeah. They, they took their lamps but they didn't take no oil. Yeah, Dear Lord, it's like going to church. I went to church, but I came back with nothing. <laughs> well, dear Lord, why did you go to church for? You went there to the Lord to fill you up and reignite you and get you ready for the following yeah, days come to come. Come back ready for the week. Yeah. Yes, get ready for the week. Here they are. And they were foolish. They took their lamps and took no oil with them. Verse 4. But the wise took oil with their vessels and with their lamps Verse Glory 5, while the bridegroom tarried, the Lord, he tarried, and that's what we're waiting on today, for the Lord to come. But that's, he's tarried That's right where the now. church is at. But he is coming. Yes, Lord. He is coming. Glory to God. And that's where the church is at right now. And he says what? And while the bridegroom tarried, they all, they all slumbered and slept. Got so, a little lazy. Yeah. The ten be, of them. The wise know, and I the always foolish. talk about lazy <clears throat> Christians. 
Lazy Christians got a little lazy there. Amen. Started slumbering. You know, we, we become complacent. And when you become complacent, that's dangerous because then you start letting up your responsibilities of what you need to be doing. And they slept. Complacency will lead you, lead you right into a boom, sleep. It'll knock you out. Lazy. He goes on and he says there in verse 5, uh, verse six, 6, he says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Glory to God. There's going to be a meeting in the air. Glory to We're God. We're going to meet him. Verse 7. <clears throat> then all those virgins arose. They trimmed their lamps. They got them ready. They got them lit up. They got them cleaned up. We're ready. We're loaded. Glory to God. Ah, but look at here now. Verse 8. Now the foolish said to the wise. Foolish said to the wise. You got to catch that. Foolish will talk to the wise. There's some foolish people in your life that you need to be careful of. That's why I've said before, be careful of the conversations you carry and involve yourselves in. Because it could be a foolish conversation that it brings no edification to your life, no substance, no strength, no direction for your life. you got to be around people that are going to talk faith, people are going to talk the word of God. You know, you can so talk good. about a matter. It's all right. Bring it to the light. But don't get stuck on the matter. Get focused on the results of what you are, you are expecting from the Lord. So he says in verse 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. More or less, they, here they are now. They're on their way, but they ran out of oil. This is interesting to me because it's it's it amazes because I, we see that we see that in today's church yeah. that people recognizes those anointed ones, mm -hmm. those people that in, are in faith, you know, with, right. in a living relationship with God, so they know who to go to, right? When they should do it themselves, right? And you know, you got to be careful because sometimes. You know, we want to be so nice, so kind. Okay, well, here's a little bit. You know what? You're going to find yourself in trouble because what you got is already measured, and you got to hold on to that. So that, does that make me selfish? That Does that make me uh, I'm, I'm a stingy person? I'm not helping nobody? No, not at all. The total contrary. You were there. See, they were there. The foolish and the wise, they were there at the same place, same time. Yeah, they were on Everything them. was right there. They all had opportunity. They started but the same. five <clears throat> said, you know what? I'm going to, they got distracted. Yeah. They started doing something else when they should have been doing the filling preparation. Up, yeah, filling up the lamp, having enough oil, exactly. being ready for the day. Instead of having that complacency attitude, oh, I'll do that after a while. I'll catch it on the way. Or like they said, you know, oh, Jesus has been coming for 2,000 years. I've been, I've, 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 I've known people that said I've been hearing that since my yeah. grandmother's yeah. times or yeah. great grandmother's times. Right. But, and that's the reason why they don't have enough oil. And enough. here's what happens also. They, they look at that and they look at those that haven't. And here's that famous word they use. They assumed, well, they got plenty of oil in case we need some. We'll just get some from them. See, without even conversing with them, without talking to them, we just assumed. Yeah. Don't go by assumption. You know, I, I don't practice assumption. And I tell the people around me, I'm very vocal don't about Don't assume. It. I'm very vocal about that. Do not assume anything. Because, see, you might be assuming something, and that's not in the mind and the thoughts of the other person next to you. Yeah. Now, he goes on to say in verse 9, But the wise answered, saying, Not nope. so, lest there be not enough for us mm -hmm. and you. Wow. But go you rather to them that sell. Go back over there where you know where we bought it at, and you buy for yourselves. Go over there and get yourself some. Because why? Verse 10, And while they went to buy... The bridegroom came. Yeah, you see? Too late. You missed it. You missed the opportunity. Can you believe how many missed opportunities Christians have had because of the lack of being, or because of being complacent? He said, now you, and while they went back to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was Shut. So now we're going to read on here, but I'm going to tell you something. That phrase caught me earlier on the other show, mm -hmm. and the door was shut. And I thought about Noah. Yeah. When the door shuts, you cannot open it. Oh, when God 
shuts the door. He shut the door in the days of Noah, and here he is He again. shut the door to the ark. He's again shutting the door. Wow. Now, that doesn't mean he's being mean, facetious. No, it means that he has a plan. He has a schedule. You know, had God not shut that door of the ark, there could have been a weakness in that door, and the force of the waters could have damaged that door and tore it off. But when God closes the door, it is solid. Mm -hmm. When the Lord moves in your behalf, you can rest assured you're coming into victory. Yes, you're Lord. You're walking in the power of his might. Be careful with the shut door because when that door closes, it won't be another opportunity. Be careful with present opportunities that you might miss because you were complacent and you didn't do your due diligence. Pray up. Stay in the word. Speak the word oil of God. Oil in your lamp. All in the lamp. Glory to God. I think there's a song like that. Uh, give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, burning. Give me oil in my lamp. Oh, Lord. You remember that song? Yeah, I remember yeah. it in Spanish. Bueno, I, at my grandma's bueno church. Bon aceite en mi luz as que brille. Oh, my God. And that's old. <laughs> You're that old? I, no, but I, I, I remember, remember that as a child. <laughs> When I will go to my grandma's church. Oh, glory to God. Pon aceite en mi luz. Verse me. 11. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. These are the ones that went. The foolish ones. To try to buy the buy oil. The oil. And, and they got the oil. But it was too but late. It was too late. Wow. The door was already shut. Wow. Imagine having everything you need, but you still can't get in now. Jesus. Because you did not do it God's way. You have to do it God's way. Verse 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you and not. And that's the key right there. I wanted to touch that. In I the Spanish know you program, not. Well, we let me just wrap up right verse 13. He <laughs> says, Watch therefore, for you know neither day or the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Back to verse 12. You said, But he answered and he said, Verily I say unto you, I, I know, know you, you not. Take a minute and talk about that. The uh, Proverbs twenty twenty seven. The yes. reborn human. Proverbs twenty, chapter twenty, verse twenty seven. Verse twenty seven. For you that are taking notes, I'm very specific about that because I know people really, and I'm so proud of you. They really get into these scriptures and they study them and they get them together. And I'm so happy for you because that encourages me to keep these shows going because we're not just talking heads. No, nope. People are serious about Thank getting you, my the father. word and learning the word. And go on. Yes. Somebody asked me the other day, is it okay if we, uh, if I preach this message or teach this message that I got on Daniel, my friend? Oh, my Lord. Go I about for it. fell apart. I said, what do you mean? Is it okay? Please. It's the word of God. Go for it. That's what we're here. What we're mm -hmm. giving you, pass it on. Get somebody else. You know somebody that needs to hear this word. And you will get more light on it too as you yeah. speak it, as you teach it. So Proverbs chapter <clears throat> 20, 20, 20, verse 27. The reborn human spirit is the lamp of the Lord. The reborn human spirit is the lamp. Is the lamp of the Lord. Of the Lord. The lamp, not the oil, but the lamp. The lamp. So he gives you the container. Yeah, you're born again yes. already. You're born again. Your spirit is alive unto God. Now, the oil, it's the Spirit, especially the Holy Spirit and the Word. So it says right here that when, 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 that the, when the Lord answered them, He told them, I know you not. What does that mean? <clears throat> that means that the foolish virgins, yep. they never really knew the Lord. Right. Well, they were still acting in their old ways. In their own ways, yeah. I mean, they, had, they were born again now. Yeah. They were born again, but there was, not, there was no oil. Remember when the ten of them fell asleep? The other five, yeah, they kind of went to sleep, but yeah. they had a fellowship. They had yeah. a communion. They were prepared. They knew the word. They had an anointing. They could go to sleep because that's how assured they were. Hey, we got at any at, an, at any time. We're okay. As soon as we, we got hear, everything ready. Yeah, and the other five, they were born again. They belonged to God, but they were not prepared. Mm. And the reason is, the Lord told them, I never knew you. There was never really no fellowship oh between you God. and I. There was never really no communion, no intimacy. Do you hear the language? <clears throat> I never knew you. Never knew He's you. talking that in that day and that hour. It's centuries later in the New Testament that 
he tells us also, Jesus stands before you. And they start telling him, well, didn't we not cast out devils, heal the sick, preach in your name? And Jesus would tell him in that day, depart, depart from me, for I never knew you. See how the Bible is connected? There's no division in the Bible. It is connected, people. You just got to see it. You got to remember that in the Old Testament, the, the nuggets, the parables, they're undercover. But in the New Testament, they're revealed. And now here they are. They have their uh, containers. They have the ability to put the oil. But did they put it in? It's just like we are born again. You see, when we're born again, we are all given a measure of faith. The measure. The measure of faith. Now, what we do with that, that's between him, that's between me, that's between you. He might use his faith, and I don't. Yeah. And he's going to become greater. He's going to grow. He's going to obtain. He's going to have victories. And I'm going to look at him, and I'm going to get jealous. Well, how, why you got all that? Well, why not? He's using his faith. If I use my faith, well, I'm going to grow. That's why people get jealous when they see certain people get blessed, and they're growing, and they achieve. God puts you in the right contact, gives you favor, and you start growing. And then... You're blessed. Well, they get jealous. Well, you're, you're getting jealous. There's no need There's for no that. There's no need for that. No. The, this word, I never knew you, that word new yeah. means intimacy. Like like when a man oh, and a that's woman, beautiful. they get intimate. Like what happened to Mary when the Holy Spirit came upon her right, and she conceived. Right, right. So that word means that I, mm. like when a man like and a that. woman come together intimately, you know, physically. So that's what Jesus is telling them. I never had intimacy with you. Mm -hmm. You never had intimacy with me. I never knew you in the heart. We were never close. And so that's the reason why, even though they were born again, they had no oil in them. They were saved, but there was no oil. There was no anointing. There was no Precious word. Jesus. And so... I mean, and the ten of them were on the way of salvation. They were going towards the, uh, meeting the Lord. And so on the way, they fell asleep, but the voice came, He's coming, He's coming. The ten virgins yeah. woke up. Yeah, All, everybody's awake. Everybody now. now is awake. But five, even though they, they, it doesn't say they went to sleep fully. So they woke up and they had everything that they needed, enough oil, enough word. They were able to get ready. They were able to, to see in the spirit that the Lord was coming. And the other five, the foolish ones, even though they were born again, they had no oil in them. So now they wanted, give me some of your oil. Pray for me. Yeah. Give me some of your anointing. Yeah. Lay hands on me. You know, that's good. We're supposed to pray one for another, but the day is coming when you need to work your own salvation. And Put to work what you know. This situation is different. Yeah. It's a different situation. Yeah. You had the opportunity. Yeah, they did. You didn't take it. Yeah. You know what? As we close today, let me tell you this, because prayer day is coming up. It's time for prayer. Yeah. Your prayer request, I believe, is going to come in as a request, <sighs> but it's going to turn into a manifestation of victory. It's time to get in there. Don't be the foolish one. You know what? And this is a good time right now. You take time. You examine. Don't wait for me. Don't wait for a minister. Don't wait for nobody else. You examine your heart. Am I where I belong with the Lord? Am I doing all that he's called me to do? Do I really set time aside to talk, to fellowship, to worship the Lord? Or am I doing it just out of customary, just out of routine? Okay, I read my five scriptures today. And, I'm, that, and go I'm done. Yeah. I got to get going. I got to roll. I got things to do. Wait a minute. You know, I always say, you know, when you pray, you should always take a few moments to be still after you pray. You have to. Because when you pray, you ask for something. You prayed for something. You wanted something. Now you need to be still because it could be in those next few moments that what you asked for and prayed about, the Holy Spirit will bring it to your understanding. But because you got up so fast, you didn't finish the meal. You left half of the food on the plate and you took off. Examine yourself. Take this day. Find out, am I one of the foolish ones or am I one of the wise ones? I believe you're wise. Wise enough to take the opportunity to take this invitation today and examine my heart and say, I'm going to make it right. Who needs prayer in your life? Who mm -hmm. do you know needs a breakthrough? Get on the line. 
call us. There's the, uh, the email address. Call us at um, or, or type it in at uwcmi.org. Go to that page that says petition. Get your request in. We're going to pray because I believe something good is about to happen. And I have some prophetic utterances from the Lord that the Lord has given me. There's some shiftings taking place. I saw it. I, I, I can't explain it all, but I know I closed my eyes and you see the ocean and you look at the ocean. But when I looked at the ocean, under the ocean, I saw this happening. I saw the ground mm. under the ocean beginning the ocean to move. Floor. The floor of the ocean began to uproar began to explode like like something underneath that ocean was starting to move up but it was moving the waters also yeah, which was causing the problems above the land so i'm speaking to you prophetically there's a shifting taking place there's some moving Jesus. taking place in the government level in the natural level the financial level all levels have no fear if you got oil in your lamp glory to god because you're going to be ready if you don't have that oil, if you're not ready, then you still need to really pray about it. Yeah. Hey, we went over time. our time. We love you. God bless you. God keep you until the next time. Amen. Tomorrow's the big day as we get ready to pray the prayer of faith and believe God for that. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock in California, 9 o'clock in Texas, 10 o'clock in New York and Puerto Rico, and then the clock stays on. We're going to leave it on the air. Prayer will be going out throughout the day because we're believing God that what's a request today will become the manifestation of an answer on tomorrow. Praise I God. believe God. Well, remember Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. What he did once, he'll do again. He continues. He's not short-handed. He can't, he can't, it's not an issue that he can't do it. He'll do it. But you got to be ready. You got to be in position for it. We love you. We're praying for you. And from my heart to your heart, I say may the grace of God be with you. Be encouraged. Walk in love. Walk in faith. Forgive one another. And pray for one another. Until the next time, walk in faith. We love you. We'll see you on the next program of Daniel, my friend. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a wonderful time in the Lord. Hello, child of God. This is he, Daniel Ponce. I want to invite you to the International Prayer Service every Wednesday night right here at your ministry, United with Christ. Now, listen, I want you to be a part of this night. Even if you're from other churches, you have a prayer ministry. You're the head of a prayer group. Come and join us. This is a night of prayer, a night when we come together. I take all the prayer requests that people have written me and my partners. We pray over you again. And many more that have letters and that have written in. We're praying for you. We're laying hands on you and we're taking the prayer requests of your needs, your hurts, your wants, your desires and we're presenting them to the Lord and our prayers are going up as an incense and aroma into the glory of his presence. You can have a miracle. When two or three of us come together, we will experience the power of God. Join us every Wednesday, 7 o'clock in California, 9 o'clock in Texas, 10 o'clock in New York. We want you there in the prayer service. Hola, este es el hermano Daniel Ponce haciéndote una invitación muy especial. Cada miércoles hemos apartado en el Ministerio Unidos con Cristo un día y noche de pura oración donde estamos orando por las peticiones. Muchos compañeros en pacto me han escrito, otros me han enviado cartas, gloria al Señor. Y aquí tengo teléfonos que han llamado, uno que me llama y me pide oración por sanidad divina, otros que escriben y son parte del correo que me llega. Este no es unos cuantos. Queremos orar contigo cada miércoles a las 7 de la tarde en California, a las 9 de la noche en Texas, a las 10 de la tarde en Nueva York y Puerto Rico. No te lo pierdes. Llama, haga parte y usa el número que están en, el tel en su televisor o en su iPad, en la tecnología que hay hoy y mándanos su petición porque aquí hay oración que es contestada. Dios te bendiga.